This is Star Trek Online, and this is the Sagittarius Class Temporal Cruiser Tier 6 Starship Review. Let's go. Hello Captains, this is the Doctor, so we've got another Starship review for you today, and this is going to be the Sagittarius class cruiser, temporal cruiser. This is technically a 26th century Starship today, and I cannot wait to show you the review on this. In fact, I have this ship on two different characters, so I might actually switch between those characters to show you a couple of different builds on them. But of course, remember, this review is not about my build and how I've set up my powers or consoles. This is just about the ship and my ability to show off the unique console that comes with it and the starship trait. So that's what we want to explore today is the ship itself. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm reviewing. And in that you can decide if this ship is for you or not. So first, welcome to my engineering character. This is the last doctor. He is an engineer. So that is the career that I have this starship put on. It is a cruiser, so it fits quite well being on an engineer. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go over all the specs on this ship so that you know what you're getting if you purchase it. It is a sea store ship. So I'm going to bring it up here in the sea store. We'll go to ships tier six and scroll down to temporal cruiser Sagittarius so this is the one with the quad nacelle design so it says here well I'll read this and then in a, on a separate page I'm going to read off of the specs it says here influenced by the legendary Gemini class the Sagittarius class cruiser is a force to be reckoned with designed with team tactics in mind the cruiser is known for sharing its strengths with fleet mates the ship's impressive combat systems make it a workhorse on the battlefield temporal starships are capable of making subtle alterations on the molecular level through the use of molecular reconstruction this technology allows a starship to assume one of three different configurations defense offensive and support each configuration has their own strengths and weaknesses each of the configurations generate their own specific counter. Up to six counters can be generated at a time. These counters are used to fuel your molecular deconstruction beam. 
So this molecular deconstruction beam is not unique to this ship. It is in fact on every temporal starship. If it's a temporal starship, it has the molecular deconstruction beam. And a temporal starship is typically the 31st century starships and these 26th century starships. They are considered temporal starships. There are, I think, a couple of others maybe out there as well. So under the defensive configuration, uh, while that is active, the starship systems will dynamically reconfigure to fill more of a defensive role. This provides a boost to maximum shield power and incoming hull healing consumes it comes at a cost of a small reduction to flight speed, flight speed and turn rate. Or you can go into an offensive configuration and the starship systems will dynamically reconfigure to fill more of an offensive role. Provides a boost to maximum engine power, speed and turn. Comes at a cost of reduction of incoming hull healing. I particularly like the offensive configuration because it gives you a little bit more uh, engine power, speed and turn rate which is good on a cruiser like this. You need that just a little bit extra boost there for maneuverability. Or you can do support configuration. The starship systems will dynamically reconfigure to fill more of a support role. Provides a boost to auxiliary power, control strength, and exotic damage, but comes at a cost to energy weapon damage. So basically you enable the one of those three roles for the ship uh, from your hotbar at the bottom while you're in space and the counter will build and when it hits max you can set off this molecular deconstruction beam it activates this special beam this is basically an extra weapon on your ship without taking up an extra weapon slot so it is just literally an extra weapon it just has to charge up and you can use it and that's one reason why I really like these temporal starships quite a bit is because it has this extra weapon ability that is not consumed by a console or a weapon slot. So it's pretty cool. This starship features a commander engineering. So there you go, a full, you know, level three power commander engineering, tier three powers, or a temporal operative. So it being a temporal starship, it can have that temporal operative and a lieutenant universal slash temporal operative bridge officer seat. The Tier 6 Temporal Cruiser comes equipped with the Chronoton Particle Exciter. When this ability is activated, you and your teammates will gain a massive boost to damage resistance, and all outgoing hull and shield heals are substantially more powerful for the duration of the effect. The console also provides a passive boost to hull and kinetic damage resistance. And of course, it can be equipped on Temporal Cruiser variants. After achieving level 5 in your Temporal Cruiser Tier 6 Starship Mastery, you unlock the Shield Overload Starship Trait. While the trait is slotted, activating emergency power to shields will also apply a massive boost to damage resistance and shield hardness. However, the effectiveness of this boost will drop off over time. And the effect of this is pretty cool. It's like a, um, a ring of shields that lower and lower and lower. It's really cool and I'm going to show you that in space. You have plus five, it says plus five to all power. So this is quite unique where like all your power is plus five on the ship. You have the particle exciter, the molecular reconstruction beam, and then because it's a cruiser, they have given you the full cruiser abilities here um, for your, um, uh, actually what I'm talking about is the cruiser communications array abilities. And they actually didn't give you full. They actually, there's one more they didn't give you here, and that's maneuverability. There is a maneuverability one they did not give you, but they did give you the shield, weapon, and attract fire. So they're just missing one of the cruiser communications array abilities, but they still give you most of them. And they give you, of course, five starship, well, four traits, well, four abilities, masteries to unlock. And then the fifth one is a starship trait. And I'm going to go over all that in space, of course. We're going to look at all those things. So from a different web page that I have up on a different screen, I'm going to just quickly read off some of the specs because for some reason they're not showing up here in the C store. But some of the specs, just for your knowledge and information, is at level 60, this ship has a base hull strength of 50,000. So that's its starting hull strength at level 60 when you're maxed out on uh, skill. It has a shield modifier of 1.05, which is very small, very tiny, so really not much. It has four forward weapon slots and four aft. So this is probably going to be a pretty good beam ship for you. You have four device slots. 
The bridge officer seating is one lieutenant commander tactical, one ensign engineering, one commander engineering slash temporal agent, one lieutenant commander science, and one lieutenant universal slash temporal. So a couple of temporal uh, seatings there on this ship. You've got three tactical console slots, four engineering, and three science. So pretty balanced between tactical and science, but then you have the extra engineering to give it that little slant toward engineering. Turn rate is eight. The impulse modifier is 0.15. Friction and traction is 45. Again, you have the plus five to all power. You've got the chroniton particle exciter. You got the molecular reconstruction beam. You got the cruiser command array ability, shield weapon and attract fire. And then you have a starship ability package cruiser which has f uh, four uh, masteries and then a five. The fifth one is a trait. So that is what you get with this Temporal Cruiser Tier 6 Sagittarius class. Quad nacelle design, and it looks quite cool. There's a couple of pictures there. Look at that profile. This is a very thin ship, and I really like the aesthetics of it. We're going to take a look at it in space. Before we hop into space, I do want to quickly show you my build, just so you know what I'll be using when I take this thing into combat to show you its abilities. But remember, this review is not about my build. This is not about grading my build. Everybody can build their ship to their unique specifications differently and however they want. And there's a lot of different ways, of course, to do builds. I do want to state that this build on my ship I have now was made prior to the recent big patch in Star Trek Online, which rebalanced space powers. So recently, this game had a huge patch that just totally revamped, re redid all the space powers. Uh, they nerfed things and all kinds of stuff. It was wacky. Um, so this build was made prior to that. So I have not adjusted this build for the current level of space power abilities. However, I have tested it in combat, and it seems to be doing pretty good with this build, so I'm not really sure that I would do much to change it, to be honest with you, because it is actually doing pretty good. Uh, even though I haven't done a ton of stuff, it's doing what I want it to do, so I'm happy with that. Now, like I said, I've got two characters that have this ship, so I might switch between uh, those two and just show you a couple of different builds, because this build is an anti-proton build, whereas... On my other character, I have like a Terran Disruptor build, which is really quite nice. It's working very well. Um, but first, I'm going to bring this up again. This is just to show you and be transparent about what I'm using, but don't grade me on my particular build. We're just, we're, we're, we want to focus on the ship itself and how it works in combat when I show you all that. So just real quickly, just going to go over everything here. As you can see, my Starship Masteries are all unlocked, and we're going to go over each one in space so that we can see the actual values here. But I am running anti-proton weaponry, as I mentioned. I have two anti-proton dual beam banks up front and a single. Then I have two single anti-protons in the back, and I have an anti-proton omnidirectional beam and a kinetic cutting beam. I am using the Kelvin Timeline Photonic Torpedo Launcher. I got this and I've been testing it out and seeing how it works and I think it's pretty cool. So I am using that. Uh, I do have the Soul Defense set on here. So I've got the Soul Defense Deflector. I've got the Soul Defense Impulse. And I have the Soul Defense Covariant Shield. So that's the set that I'm using on this ship. The warp core is an Elite Fleet Plasma Integrated Warp Core, and obviously you can see everything's upgraded to Mark 14 Epic, as high as it can go. I do have a Enhanced Neutronium on here. I also have, and I just put this on here, I'm playing with some of these new consoles from the new uh, K13, um, um, the new uh, uh, Fleet Holdings, what I'm trying to say. Uh, this is a Xenotech power flow module that gives me a power transfer rate in improvement, starship hull penetration, and a reduction to specialist bridge officer ability recharge times as well. So I've got that on here. I've got the assimilated module. 
I do have a sustained radiant field on here, plus 25 hull healing and all weapon damage and two shield heals as well. I've got a temporal disentanglement suite on here, extra ox power, shield capacity, critical chance, and critical severity. And then I am using a bioneural gel pack for more power and more shield capacity. And then of course I've got my tactical consoles maxed out with anti-proton damage. And this is the unique console. So of course all this other stuff, you can decide whatever you want to put in those consoles and make your own build, right? But this is what comes with the ship. So here's what's unique about this ship. You get the Universal Chroniton Particle Exciter. It is plus 12 kinetic damage resistance and plus 3.3% maximum hull capacity just by having it on your ship. Those are passive abilities that you get. But then the ability that you activate is you get a team damage resistance and incoming hull and shield healing improvement. So a plus 300 bonus all damage resistance rating for 10 seconds and a plus 300% shield heals for 10 seconds and plus 200% hull healing for 10 seconds and prevents the target from using or being affected by buying time for 60 seconds and it has a two minute recharge. So basically this is a good ability uh, as a cruiser in a support role uh, for your team because this is a team effect. It does affect you of course so it's going to help you in regardless even if you're solo but when you're in a team when you're around other people in your team this can greatly help your team as well because it's going to give them all a damage resistance for 10 seconds like if everybody you know really needs a damage resistance there you go if people are dying and they want to heal their hull and their shields you can activate this first and that will give them a big improvement to those abilities so this is a good way to help your team and of course yourself so that's the unique console of course that has to be activated from your hotbar. So of course I'll show you what the actual trait is, shield overload, when we get into space. We'll read about that and I will demonstrate that ability as well. So the mastery trait and the console are the two unique abilities on this ship. Let me show you the stations so you can see the seating that this ship has. You can see that it's got that commander uh, engineering seating and also temporal. So you can have a temporal commander seating on this thing quite nice you have a lot of temporal powers if you want you can really do that on this ship and you also have that universal temporal seating so that's quite nice too and then of course you've got a lieutenant commander science seating I mean that's a pretty high science seating to be honest with you and lieutenant commander tactical so you've got both lieutenant commander tactical and science very very cool and then an extra engineering seating so this is a pretty nice setup in terms of seating here. You can do a lot. You can have a lot of temporal powers if you want to utilize that. So I like the setup on this. I like the seating that this has. Uh, let's see what else. That's pretty much all that I can show you while we're on the ground. All the stats and everything I need to show you in space. So in fact, let's do that. But before we hop into space, let's just hop right down here. We and we're going to take a look at a, any visual customizations we can do with this ship. Customize ship. We're going to customize starship. And I am going to show you what you can do. This is the default view of the ship. This is the default skin. It's a type 8 material. This is what it looks like. It's called the Sagittarius. Um, because it's based on the Toss Gemini, if you have the Toss Gemini ship, you can actually switch it to look like the Toss Gemini. And that's what that looks like. So you could trick people. You could make them think you're flying the Gemini when you're really flying the Sagittarius. But anyway, this is the new look. This is the 26th century look. Very flat, very pancakey look. You have what's called a universe bridge on this thing, and we will take a look at that too. It's a unique bridge, so you get that, and it's called a universe bridge, and it is very similar in design to the Enterprise J interior. Now, you've got one type of windows, so you can't really change the look of the windows, but you can change the look of material based on what ships you have purchased and so forth. There's a type O, which is basically a toss skin, Type 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, which is very bright, very white, very bright, seven, and then eight. And then upgrade skin if you have that, or a veteran skin if you're a veteran. But this is the default view is the type eight. And you can change the colors and pattern here as well. You can put a pattern on it, although maybe it doesn't show up too well on this ship. Depends on the skin, probably. And you can't really change anything. It's either Gemini or Sagittarius. So there's not a lot of options in terms of customization. Pretty much it's just the material and the bridge you want. So the one way that you can change this ship and make it look different from other ships is to use a shield effect and put that in your visual tab. When you go to the ship and you go to visuals, you've got deflector, impulse, and shields. If you put a shield visual here on your ship, that's one way to really change the look of it. And in fact, the one I prefer is the Terran Task Force shield. Now, I will put that on in space and show you what that looks like after we take a look at the default view. Because I think that shield makes this ship look way better. Let's head up to the bridge. Let's take a look at that unique bridge. Visit Starship Bridge. This is the Universe Bridge and it has the same textures as the Enterprise J. And it's a very big bridge. It's got windows up top in a circular fashion. And I, like I said in previous videos, I like ships that have actual windows instead of a view screen. I like to look out a real window. I would rather my windows be real than fake. So I like this real window here, having a huge real window to look out of and then the windows up there. I think that that's very cool and that's big and it rightly should be big. In fact, I think they could make this window even bigger all the way from here to here is what I would do. I would make this thing even bigger. But I do like the fact that it's a real window. Now, I'm not sure about the bridge because I don't see a captain's chair. So I think that's a problem. Maybe it's supposed to go here. Maybe a door opens and it comes up. I don't know. But I don't see a chair and that could be a problem. We can select a small craft here. We can access our account bank, library files, and duty officers. We've got my bridge officers, of course, on the ship. And it looks like officers come down here and work as well. So this bridge has so much space for people to work in. You can have a lot of people on this bridge working at one time. A big workforce. Screens over here. I mean, we've got workstations just all over this bridge. So you can see that they can put a lot of people in here to work but yeah I would need a chair I'm also just noticing it looks like there's stations and things up there too on this upper ring unfortunately we can't get to that ring but you could put people up there working too so just a massive amount of people working on this bridge um, but need a chair and I think that window could definitely be bigger but anyway that is the bridge. I don't know if these doors go anywhere. I don't think they do. Yeah, these doors go nowhere. So, unfortunately, there's no ready room I can go visit or anything like that. Kind of a shame. No separate ready room. So we don't get a ready room to visit. But, just a massive bridge. So that's the Universe Bridge. Let's leave ship interior and then we will head up into space and take a look at the specs of the ship. And then we'll do some combat and I can show you off the abilities of this ship and you can decide for yourself if you like this ship or not. Okay everybody, welcome to space. The final frontier. So here is the default view of the Sagittarius. I'm not using any visual, visual, extra visuals at all. This is the default skin, and you can see that because it's so thin that the nacelle colors at the edge almost look like that Tron look, like an Aegis shield would look like, but of course the Aegis shield is not on here, but it still has that kind of highlighted edge look, which is quite cool, and then it has some other edges that are kind of lit up too. I like 
I like this blue bit stuff in here where it's like, it's almost like circuitry. It's almost like, you know, a motherboard or something. It's like circuitry lit up and all the lines lit up in circuitry. I think that's a really cool look. It's random and I like random things like that. I think it really, really helps define the ship better. And then you've got these lines here coming with these colors here and then the thinness of the nacelles. See the lines coming down the struts here? I love that. It's on the top and the bottom. And then you have these uh, under, right underneath it. Uh, just the way everything is drawn here and the lines here. Everything looks really cool on this ship. I like how you can kind of see inside the Bussard collectors as well. That's really neat. And then the deflector. Look how thin that deflector is. And it's kind of multicolored purple and blue and white. I like that. It's very unique. This has got a very unique coloring to it. But not just the colors, the shape of it. It's thin. I mean, look at that profile. Look at that. I guess that's not a profile, but head on. Look at that head on. The way the nacelles are just like so, it's like sandwiched right above and below the saucer and the saucer is so thin I mean that's a heck of a view right there and then we come to the side it's, it's like it hides itself when you're looking at it dead on and then the side profile look at that now that's a profile I mean that is that is just really cool Now I'm stuck at the end of the world. Here we go. I mean, that is just exceptionally cool looking. And then you look at it from behind. Look at it like that. I think it, it, it's, it's like an X-Wing. It's like a compressed X-Wing. <laughs> a, a compressed X-Wing design. I mean, it's actually really cool. And it's a, it's a starship. Let's kind of look at and compare the size. This is a... I don't know how to put it. I guess it's not a large starship, but it's not small. It's kind of perfectly sized, actually. It's kind of a perfectly sized uh, cruiser. I want to put it. Up, I want to put it up next to this ship so we can compare to the size here, so you can see it. It's smaller than this ship. Yeah, it's smaller. It's smaller because the hull is smaller. The hull, I mean, the uh, the saucer, I mean, it's round and flat, but it's not as big as, say, a ship like that. It's smaller than that, which is actually quite nice, even though it's more advanced. Even though it's 26th century, it's a little bit smaller. Looks like I got a friend here. <laughs> Somebody following me. Here is a Galaxy X. Let's look at it next to the Galaxy X. Look at that. See, it's smaller. It's smaller than the Galaxy X. More advanced and smaller. Maybe longer, though. It may be just a little bit longer, but the hole. Yeah, I'm not the hole. I keep calling the saucer the hole. The saucer is much smaller. And this may be wider here between here. And maybe a tad longer, I don't know, it's hard to tell, but yeah, you can really see that this is not a gigantic ship, which means it's actually easy to fly. You can see the turn rate here um, as I'm flying this ship. I'm not really struggling to get where I need to go. It turns really good, even though it's a big ship. So I'll kind of stand still and you can see how I turn here. It's a cruiser, so it's going to turn slower, but that's not terrible. Now, the, now you need to know I do have pilot as my secondary skill on, so that will affect the turn rate here. That will improve my turn rate. Uh, the um, what, what I'm talking about is the specialization skills. I've got pilot as my secondary, so that is adding plus 40 percent turn rate so that's the extra turn rate i'm getting is plus 40 percent turn rate right now so that i am getting that little bonus and that does help on a cruiser like this but even but with that it's still not as fast as it could be but it's decent and it works 
<laughs> I can fly this ship quite easily with a turn rate like that. So let's get a real close-up look at it, just so you can get some real close-up views here. I love the visuals on this ship, I've got to say, I really do. It is a really cool visual. Yeah, I like that. I like the way that looks a lot. Let's look at our specs so you can see what I've got going on here in terms of specifications. So I've got the Starship Masteries unlocked. The first one is absorptive hull plating. You've got plus 25 physical damage resistance and kinetic damage resistance. The second is rapid repairs, increase hull regeneration, regenerates 12, 16 hull, 1.25% of your current max every three seconds in space, twice the amount out of combat. You have the third one is enhanced hull plating plus 25 energy damage resistance and radiation resistance. Then you have plus 10% hull hit points. And finally, the fifth one is the starship trait called shield overload. Emergency power to shields boost damage resistance and shield hardness. So it increases damage resistance rating to all damage by 75. This effect decreases drastically each 5 seconds for 30 seconds. And it increases shield resistance by 75% and decreases drastically every 5 seconds for 30 seconds. So if it sounds familiar to the console, it is. It's basically a shield resistance on top of a bonus all damage resistance. So enabling both at the same time can yield a very, very high resistance to damage on your ship. So with both the trait and the console, if you want to build, let's say, a tank, something that can just take a lot of damage, these two abilities right here, combined and enabled at the same time, will be a huge boon to creating a tank-type ship or a ship that can take a lot of damage. So if you're going that direction, these abilities are worth that. Now, you do have to enable this via the um, da, 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 the uh, power to shields, emergency power to shields. So that's how you enable the starship trait. And I will show you and demonstrate that ability in a second. Here are all the stats. I've got a stealth detection rating of 3215. Power transfer rates 307%. So you see, I don't need an EPS or anything like that. My Xenotech here with the 31.7% power transfer rate is plenty. I've got a hull strength of 97,284. Remember the default or base is 50,000. So quite a bit of uh, extra hull strength there. The hull repair rate is 118.2%. My shield regeneration rate is 615.6 .6 shields every six seconds. My shield strength is at 18,709. And my resistances are quite high by default anyway. 55, 60, 52, 44 on radiation. Everything's pretty good on a resistance. And then I've got a 12.3% chance to hit uh, do critical severity and a 71.5% chance of crit, or 71.5% crit severity. Um, and I can look at the turn rate is 15.8 degrees per second, so it is quite buffed from the default. The default is a little slow at eight, but typically most people have get that buffed through, you know, unique impulse engines, or, oh no, I don't want that. Or, um, you know, unique impulse engines, or like uh, the skill trait, the pilot skill trait, things like that can buff your turn rate. So you'll get a big turn rate from that kind of stuff. Um, now let me demonstrate for you some of the abilities. We've got the unique console ability called Buying Time. That is the team and self damage resist resistance and incoming hull and shield healing. This is what it looks like. You're going to get this huge damage resistance. 
It's a very cool looking ability and for 10 seconds you have all that resistance. Now check it out, 88%, 88, 89, 87. So really high resistances and I would have like a really big whole heal when I do that and shield heal, shield and whole heal when I do that. So obviously I don't have damage to heal right now to show you. But increasing that, you saw really increased my resistances just quite a bit. It just went through the roof there. You know, 80-something 80, 80 percent, 88 percent. So that's what that does. And, of course, that will help your entire team when that's active. Now, it does have a two-minute cooldown. So got to wait for that to cool down. And you're locked out. Now, the other thing is, of course, the Starship Trait which is enabled by using emergency power to shields. And you will get, again, let's just look over it real quick, you will get um, damage resistance rating to all damage by 75, and then a shield resistance 75%. So we'll, we'll enable that, and it's, it decreases quickly every five seconds. So here's what the effect looks like. Here we go. See? and But then it's going to start decreasing. These bars will decrease like that. And I'm not sure if it shows up in the stats. Yes, it does. So you see the resistances are in the stats, but every five seconds they will reduce until it's totally gone. Just like that. But I think the visual on this is really cool. And then it's gone. So what I will do is I will wait for both of these to cool down. Let's see. It has a uh, five second. Let everything cool down here. With both cool down, I'm going to hit both at the same time. And we're going to see what the resistances go up at maximum. So here we go. There you go, like 90% resistances. I mean, holy crap. So you can see that you can really, really make a very resistant ship by enabling both of those abilities at the same time, which is pretty cool. So that's the trait and the console. That's what those do together. Now I will just show you for the sake of transparency what my DPSs are here on my weapons currently. I'm curious as well. I'm not even sure what they are. Again, this is post space revamp. So I'm not sure what all this is going to come out to be yet. But it looks like my duels are doing 1655 DPS, 2000 anti-proton. And it looks like this single is doing 1273 DPS and 1591. The torpedo is doing 1885 and then 75 42 kinetic damage. In the back, we got 1273 and 1591 anti proton. 1273. The Omni, probably a little less. 1144, not too much less. And then the kinetic is 1704 DPS and 22 kinetic. So that's what my DPSs are showing up on the weapons right now. I have not parsed this ship, so I do not know its current DPS, but it was very good pre-space revamp, <laughs> and I haven't really had any problems post-space revamp, so I think I'm doing pretty good damage. The next step is to simply show you all combat. I want to demonstrate the abilities. I've got the molecular deconstruction beam. Again, this is, as you can see, 4570 physical damage. And we can enable that by selecting one of the modes. We've got the offensive configuration mode, or we have defensive configuration, or we have support configuration. And like I said, I enjoy offensive configuration. You get engine power, flight speed, and turn rate, which I really enjoy more of on this ship. And then the counter will go up as I'm in combat, and then I can fire off a molecular deconstruction beam and just do more damage. It's an extra weapon that doesn't take up any slots. 
And then if I'm taking damage or doing real badly, I can enable buying time for some resistance and heals if I need to heal myself. Or I can do emergency power to shields and get myself some a little bit more resistance and shield resistance and stuff. So those are the abilities but, excuse me, that are unique to this ship. Everything else is simply going to be based on whatever your powers are. Whatever powers, bridge officer powers, you choose to use. And of course we have the command weapon system efficiency, the shield frequency modulation, and the attract fire from the command array abilities that this ship also has because it's a cruiser. Okay, so at this time, I'm going to demonstrate some combat and we're just going to see how it does. Let's warp out and head to a patrol. That's the easiest way for me to demonstrate this is just to do some patrols. And let's start with Argala. That's a very common patrol. A lot of people do that in the Delta Quadrant. So let's go do Argala. After that, uh, maybe we'll do we'll do something else. I don't know, maybe Tholian Red Alert, maybe something like that, just to kind of shake it up. And uh, I might even do a an STF, maybe uh, the Conduit. We'll see. Let's go to Argala. And again, uh, this the point of this is just to show you the ship in combat. Now, of course, the powers I'm using and the weaponry and my build is going to just depend on what you want to put on the ship. You can put anything you want. So the three powers to look for that I'll be using when I do will be buying time, because that's the unique console for the ship, and then the trait when I hit emergency power to shield, and then, of course, the molecular deconstruction beam. So just take a note of uh, when I do that. Otherwise, just kind of sit back and relax and uh, watch some combat here and see how good this ship can do. I'm, I don't really have a plan here except to just take out all the ships best I can. I am going to put it in the offensive configuration. And then I'm just going to go to town, guys. I'm just going to go to town. Warning. Ship is under attack. Looks like we have K's on. That was pretty simple right there. Let's accept this from the Benthans and do the rest. Okay, so my molecular deconstruction beam is ready to go. So let's use it on this carrier. Warning. There Ship it goes, and it's doing its damage. Check that out. Look how much damage it's doing, too. This is a great weapon to use on big, powerful ships. Let's get some resistances going. I'll enable that. And easy peasy. Easy peasy. That is just working so well. Have 
I'm seeing a problem with all these buttons uh, in the way of my stuff here. There we go. I couldn't see my thing down here. Very nice. All right, we got one more group, and I have not used the emergency power to shields yet, so we'll go ahead and use it on this one. I can use that now. Here we go. There we go. Emergency power to shields with the starship trait active. Target shield has failed. And that, folks, is how it's done. As you can see, this ship can blow through that really easily. And um, didn't even hurt me hardly. They didn't even hardly hurt me. I really didn't even need to use the Starship trait or the Resistance one, the buying time. I really didn't even need to use them in this one. But what did help me is the molecular deconstruction beam on the carriers really helped. And that's where I find molecular deconstruction beam really helps is on the big ships. The ships that have a high hull strength, hitting that ability at max power can really do a lot of damage. 8379 physical damage. It's not maxed out. It's got one bar left. So I think it's like close to 10,000 physical damage. So it's really cool. It does a lot. I'm very impressed by that ability. Alright, so we've got some more things we can do here. Let's queue up for something. Let's do... Let's do a Tholian Red Alert. How about that? Let's join one of those. Oh, look at that. We're going to get right in, too. Yes, join the queue. Did I do that right? I hate this new system. I'm not sure if I just did that right. Where does Tholian th show up on here? Tholian Red Alert. There it is. I guess I am part of the queue. I don't know how long it's going to take to join it, though. Oh, I guess it's going to be right now. That's what I hate about this thing. You never know when it's actually going to pop, you know, when it's going to go in. The new system is really clunky. And I, did it put me into one already started? No, I guess not too bad. Okay. Let's go mess some Tholians up, huh? They are nine levels above me, so note that. They are nine levels above me. <laughs> so I am going to have to use my resistance powers on this one. Shield has failed. 
I'm real close to the big ships. that can happen all kinds of big ships around here let's try again Getting rid of all these recluses will help. There were a lot of them. That's what was hurting me so much. Now we can concentrate on the bigger ships. I had to get the small ones out of the way. I'm saving my molecular beam for the big ships. Okay, now let's take care of that one. There we go, got that one. And got that.
What a battle. That was really good. That was really good, but it really shows off the capability of the ship. One thing I forgot to do, I was going to do this earlier. I'm going to put on that Terran shield on the visuals and show you how good this ship looks. With the Terran visual shield on. Check that out. That looks a lot better to me. It's got a really cool look now. I'm going to leave that shield visual on and we're going to do... We're going to do the conduit. Let's go ahead and do a Borg STF. So, you would notice that all the enemy was nine levels above me in that one. So, it was a little bit tougher. But, uh... You know, I still did pretty good. I died once. I probably could have avoided that, but it happens. Let's queue up. Let's do Omega Marks. Let's do Conduit. Let's do Advanced. And let's join one selected. There we go. Okay. Now I'm pugging this. So, you know, a pugged Conduit Advanced. So this could go absolutely terrible. I mean, I hope it doesn't, but it could. So we'll see what happens. So there's the visual with the uh, Terran shield. I think it looks so cool like that. So that's the uh, that's the look I'm going for on this ship. The nacelles are yellow. She's got a neat look to it. Looks really good in space. I'm getting hung up in the docking bay area. Yeah, I like that look a lot. One thing I also haven't shown yet, I forgot, is how the ship looks when zoomed all the way out or all the way in. So I'll do that at the end here after this STF. Just to show you what it looks like if you're zoomed out or in. Because some people like to zoom out real far. Some people like to stay zoomed in. You know, people play differently. The Borg, of course, have the ability to drain your shields really fast. So, having this emergency power to shields plus resistance and all that actually really helps a lot. I'm like the only one firing at this thing. Your defensive capabilities are unable to extend us. Lower your shields and await assimilation.
have failed. Four shields failing. Rear shields failing. Right shields failing. I'm able to stay alive, taking a lot of damage, but you guys can see I am able to stay alive. This ship, this ship can definitely withstand it. And at the same time, I am doing a pretty good amount of damage.
shields failing. Left shields failing. Resistance is futile. And there we go. So as you can see, this ship can take a beating, it can do damage. It's a very capable ship, and it looks good doing it. I think the visuals on it are exceptionally good. So that's it, folks. That's all the abilities it has demonstrated. That is how it operates. I think it does very good as a ship that you want to take a lot of damage or take a lot of damage away from other people, be the, the uh, ship that gets beat on. Uh, you can use Attract Fire for that, actually. I didn't use it here, but Attract Fire will, you know, take some of that threat generation onto you. Um, and this ship can take it. At the same time, it can also do damage. Uh, but this is it all the way zoomed out, for those that want to see what it looks like zoomed out. This is the ship all the way zoomed out, so it is quite tiny when you zoom all the way out. Which shows that it's not a huge ship. And then if you want to zoom all the way in, it looks like that. That's zoomed all the way in. And that's one step back right there. And that's two steps back. And three steps back. And that's probably a comfortable playing position. I like this three steps back for me. That's, that's where I'm going to play it at. Well, everybody... And that is going to conclude my review of this ship, the Sagittarius Temporal Cruiser. I do like this ship. Oh, yes. What am I saying? I totally forgot. I have this on a different character. Welcome, everybody, to Ruby Rose, a character that I did a Let's Play series on of the original Star Trek faction, the Toss faction, that they put up a while ago. And, well, on this character, I decided to also go with the said Sagittarius Temporal Cruiser, and here it is. But what's different about this build than the last one is this is a Terran Disruptor build. I'm using Disruptor Weaponry, so check this out. I've got dual Disruptor Beam Banks. I've got the Terran Task Force Disruptor Beam, the Terran Task Force Photon Torpedo, I've got the Terran Task Force, a deflector, the Terran Task Force Impulse, the Terran Task Force Warp Core, and the Terran Task Force Covariant Shield, and then I have Disruptor Beams in the back. And here's the unique console on this ship, of course. And I'm using a Nausicaan Siphon capa Capacitor because it increases Disruptor Damage. I am using the Ferrofluidic hydro Hydraulic Assembly. It's got maximum hit points, weapon power, and aux power settings. And I've got the M6 computer on here, the Universal M6 computer, which does all kinds of things, as you can see below. I've got disruptor damage going on down here. So as you can see, this is a really nice disruptor build. Let's see what skill, what specializations I am using on this one. Whereas I had Intelligence Officer and Pilot, on this one I've got Command Officer Reputation, or not Reputation, Specialization, and then Commando, that's Ground, but I'm using the Command Officer as my primary specialization on this one. So this is a much different build than the last one. And uh, now I can show you some combat in this one. So let's go do that real quick. I don't know why, I just warped out, I can just... I want to use the transwarp. I want to go, go to Argala, and I'm going to do the same thing I did there, but we'll do it uh, with this ship. So let's go to the Delta Quadrant. This ship, again, this build was made before the big space revamp, and I had great success with it. Hopefully it's still good post-space revamp. Um, but again, just keep in mind, this review is not about these builds, it's about the ship. But this is just another way for me to show you the ship. Another way for me to show you the ship in combat, and how it looks and works and behaves and operates and all that sort of stuff. So this, is a, uh, this was a really good build though, and I had a lot of success with this ship when I was flying it and playing it on this character. 
So, since I've got this ship on two characters, let's let's demonstrate it. That's pretty much the idea here. So again, I'm just going to go all out. Target's shields have failed. There you go. Dead. Dead. They are dead. They have died. Where be the enemy? That is really a lot of fun. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Now I have this unique ability called Disruptor Shell. I can show that off. Check that out. When it expires, it does disruptor damage to the enemy, which is really cool. Target shields have failed. Secondary torpedo launchers as well. Final battle. Warning. Ship is under attack. Four shields failing. Shield 
target's shield has failed. As you can see, that is a pretty cool build, huh, with this ship. I mean, it's very powerful. We'll do one more. We'll do one more just because I'm having a lot of fun with this. But it also shows off the abilities of the ship real well. It shows how you can have a very powerful tanking ship and also a powerful uh, hitting ship. This does a lot of damage, too. Okay, let us do, uh, let's do the Tholian Red Alert in this one as well. Um, where do I go? Holy and red alert. Join Q. Maybe this will go real quickly. Again, where is that one at? I guess under all would work. Yeah, it seems to be feeling fast, so hopefully that won't take but a second here. Yep, this has been a good ship. Like I said, I like it so much. I got it on two different characters and um, really enjoy it. You can do a lot with it. Now, what I haven't messed with yet is the temporal powers. Because remember, it's got temporal agent bridge officer seating. So you can actually do some pretty good temporal powers on this ship. And I have not done that yet. But remember, it has that stuff. So it's pretty flexible in what you want to do with it. So let's see, are these above me on level? Yes, they are above me on level. This um, disruptor shell will actually uh, help me out. It's, it does, um, what does it do? Reduces damage to shields by 90%, so it does quite a bit there. In a pickle at the moment. In a pickle. Shield tractor beams are holding me in place and I can't get away. Good. 
Mirror Universe ships have joined the party, I see. Yay! Well, that one's way over there. How'd it get way over there? How did that one get way over here? Holy crap. That's how you do that. Well, everybody. I think I've proven how good the Sagittarius Temporal Cruiser is. Got quite a bit of abilities on it. It's a good engineering cruiser type ship. You can build it to be a support ship. You can build it to be a tank. You can build it to attract fire and uh, be a threat generator to take threat away from other people you can use it to do damage um, it is very flexible you have of course a full tier 3 commander engineering seat you have temporal abilities temporal bridge officer abilities a couple of temporal bridge officer seats that you could use you have the molecular deconstruction beam which is a completely separate weapon in of itself that doesn't take up any weapon slots you have the incredible resistance of buying time and of the emergency power to shield uh, trait. And you have the you combine those and it can be a really good tank and take a lot of damage and heal yourself really good too. And your team, remember, buying time works for your team as well, not just you. Um, and it's a good starship to use the commander specialization. Uh, under uh, skills and command officer this is a good character engineering character and ship cruiser to use the command officer specialization tree very good for this ship and of course pilot skill will help you turn a little bit better because you get that 40% uh, turn rate buff with that or you can use and or you can use offensive configuration we've got those different configuration options here defensive and um, and the support one as well, support configuration. So you've got quite a bit of flexibility with this ship, and I just think it looks good. I think it looks good. So it is a very good starship. Well, guys, I think I am at the end, finally, of this starship review. 
want to thank everybody for watching this review and uh, I'm going to go back to the soul system here and just give my final grade on this thing and then I will be off of here and uh, I'll have another Starship review for you very soon as well. So all that said and done, uh, I am going to give the Sagittarius class Temporal Cruiser very high markings, a very good grade. I would grade this an A out of an A, B, C, D, F system, this would get an A. This is, I think, a worthy starship to own. If you're an engineer or if you like cruisers, I think this is a good ship. I really don't have any problems with it. Sometimes I have problems with some ships. I have not really found a problem with sh this ship in my flying it, in my using it. I have not really found any problems with it. It does everything that I set it out to do very well, and it just doesn't. This is a worthy ship that I think you could have a lot of fun with in this game. So there you go. That's my score. That's my grade. That's what I'm going to give it. That's my review of the Sagittarius class Temporal Cruiser. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the ship. Do you fly it? Do you enjoy it? Is it the next best thing since sliced bread, or do you just want to throw it in the garbage and have nothing to do with it ever again? Let me know what you think, and or if you also plan to get this ship in the future as well. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.